Well, good day, good morning, good evening. I'm so glad you're here. Well, it's another beautiful day out. Uh, the wind is starting to kick up, so I wanted to get this out and soon. My name is Jill, and here we talk about on this channel, Jill's Journals, Journal Vlog Create, but today I want to talk a little bit about why those processes are so important. And for me, it's what I call the art of containment. Now, one of the people who's done a masterful marketing job for their own personal practices is Wim Hof. He divides his into three categories, meditation, breath work, and cold. But as much as he practices these, and I'm not putting them or him down, excellent marketing though, is he is not what I mean by the containment. He is the opposite of contained. Guys, feel the palms of your hands. They are warm. This is the way you learn how to deal most stress. Let it go. You are thinking. And you are walking well now. Yeah. You feel good. It's amazing. It's ten minutes. No preparation. Just the power of the mind. Breathe. Good. And relax. It's deep enough. And three, pull it in. Letting go. Two, pull it in. Even though he does all these practices that would make you think being able to sit still in really cold environments is what containment is. Let's go. Let's go. Now, we'll talk a little bit more another day about why I think that and what my personal observations are. But today I wanted to just start to introduce what it actually means to be contained. And it's not a permanent state of being. It's a place that I am inviting you to both strengthen within you and more easily return to. And so there's three things that I want to talk about as benefits. The first is what I want to call riding the wave of uncertainty, surfing the wave of uncertainty. Because right now, more than any time in history that is in our personal awareness, there is such a devastating amount of uncertainty that we're aware of. It doesn't mean that there haven't been more dangerous times in our world history, but with the internet and with so much access to information, with a little bit of paying attention, how can you not be overwhelmed with the huge amount of uncertainty that we're all being faced with, even right as I speak? And therefore have decided to set the doomsday clock at 100 seconds to midnight. You know, what is the, the doomsday of the atomic clock, right? 10 seconds to midnight here. It's closer than it's probably ever been, separate from the Cuban Missile Crisis. So... We can't do anything about that. None of us as individuals have control over what happens at the great big level in this moment. But the same is true for all the little moments that go through your life. So when I talk about surfing the wave of uncertainty, it's uncertainty is just part of life. So how do we better find a way to manage it within ourselves? Because if you're more than 15 years old, you figure it out. You can't manage it out in the world 24-7, 365. The second benefit is almost the same thing. How do we manage the stress and the anxiety that is overwhelming most of us, whether we are prone to anxiety or stress or not? Now, there's lots and lots of things we can do, but I really want to speak to it as a process and not an outcome. How do we return to heart and center, not in a touchy-feely, la-la kind of way. 
After many years of meditation in all the twists and turns of life, I am now in the grip of intense fear and anxiety. It seems it was always there, only more intense now. Sitting with it, letting it be there, seems to make it grow. Well, fear, anxiety, which is a form of fear, uh, very common. But in a powerful, focused way. To me, that is what containment is. It's not a mental practice or process. It's a very powerful, internal locus of control, central, heart and center here. Super focused, super powerful, very calm no matter what stressors or how much anxiety producing events are going on around you. And the third thing that I really think is probably the most important for people like me who are wired for danger is how do I recover from those extreme emotions, whether they be adrenaline fueled events which are exciting, full on flight response, fight response, full on go to war, full on I am in the danger zone, to the opposite, where we're just overwhelmed with grief, with pain, with suffering, or whether it's even intense joy. I mean, with every high, there's a low. How do we return to that calm place when we are flooded with super intense emotions? And so one of the things that I want to do with these three ideas is to really drill in the fact that it's not about being perfectly contained all the time. And I think that's one of the great big misunderstandings is that somehow we're supposed to be super zen 24-7, 365. No, I don't personally believe that. I believe that we all have a different rhythm to ourselves and to our lives. If I sat in a cave, I could probably master the zen aspect, but I don't know about you, I would be bored out of my mind. I am not wired to be zen and blissed out. I am wired to jump into the fire, but I need ways to get out. Once I get out of it, how do I recover? And to stop being judged and contrasted to all those who are believing somehow we're supposed to all be gentle, kind, loving, and peaceful. That is so not me. I like the word contained. How do I rein it in? How do I focus it up? How does it get laser powerful so that I can be calm in storm or in the eye? That to me is what really this art of containment is all about. Now for those of you who are like me, wired for danger, meaning that your primary stress response is fight in the face of danger itself, well, I'm talking about that more than how do you, what is the way to containment? But for here at YouTube, we're really gonna talk about it as an art form. And that's really where the journal, the vlog, and the create come in in the most powerful ways. And the four keys, so those are the three benefits, the four keys to containment, this is just an introduction, is analog before digital. Meaning that true containment really occurs in the real world, not in the virtual. It, re it occurs physically with our senses in actual uh, tactile, interactive ways, not in observational ways. The second key is the idea, so it's analog before digital. The second is private before public. I really think there's three ways to be in the world. There's private, which you don't tell anybody. There's personal, what you tell family and friends. And then there's public, which is like what I'm doing here with you. Blurting it out, let the heavens fall. So really focusing in such a way that we are private first before we blurt our every thought or we take our every action 
without really thinking about it. And the way that we can do that best is we write before speaking and then we read what we wrote before acting. And I know that seems like I can't do that in every situation, but it's really a practice of training yourself as a way to monitor and to filter and to discern and to uh, become more efficient in that uh, see, think, feel, act thing that happens that we've almost all lost control of in this immediate world where we can just hop online and blurt our every thought and show our every action unfiltered in real time. Now that was cool and exciting as an idea, but I think there's been some pretty negative repercussions from that. So I think it's time to really look at it and take it back. And so that's just the introduction to what I'm calling the art of containment. It's not being blissed out, it's not zen, it's not being happy, gentle, kind. It's not being in your head, it's not turning off your emotions. It's really a very integrative process to manage who we all are in an up and down kind of world, in an up and down kind of way, without drugs, without medication, without external prompters trying to hold us in, wanted or unwanted, but as an inside out process. The art of containment is about internal process, not external outcomes. And so much of what we talk about with stress management and things like that is really focusing on more outcome. I don't believe in that. I believe that our true power comes when we focus on process, not outcome. That makes other people uncomfortable. I welcome you to entertain a different point of view. So with that, we're gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this day. Keep my fingers crossed there is a rest of this day. And that, with that, my friends, I will see you next time, maybe. <laughs>